Jumping ahead a few decades, the static black and white card gave way to animation and, of course, color, like Blake Edwards' 1963 Pink Panther movies, which uh, also brought, you know, really saturated, wonderful colors and uh, laughter, paved the way for slapstick comedy of Peter Sellers, Peter Sellers in the movie. And it, and it fit pretty good. It already gets you in the, the right mood to see what uh, you're going to see, gets you, you know, ready for the action. Robert Mulligan's To Kill a Mockingbird was used as uh, in great intro sequence when they use macro photography to show the treasured collection of a small girl growing up in the American South. And you notice in the intro sequence of this movie, you never see the girl's face, but you glean so much from the photography as to give the viewer great insight into the character and what's important to the character. You know, when I say macro photography, I'm talking about, you know, real close ups of things to show the beauty uh, and the wear and tear of everyday objects and, and you know, her treasures, right? Marbles, um, shiny uh, crayons and, and rings and stuff like that. I illustrations that she does, you know, stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of a fun, fun way to give insight into the character um, without having to actually say anything. You know, the old uh, golden rule in the movies is show, don't tell. It's a perfect way to do it. These kids right here, look how bright and cheery these, these little kids are attending school, right? What could possibly go wrong? Plenty, right? In seven years' time, Harry Potter and his friends, Ron and Hermione, uh, along with all the other schoolmates, um, along with the story, the tone, the danger, the color palette, the music, basically everything across this franchise from movie one to movie eight, gets darker and more sinister. Uh, and what better way to show you the direction of the franchise, the direction of the story, the arc of the narrative, um, than starting with the studio logo and the title. You know, watch how the first few logos of Warner Brothers reveals the very early Harry Potter films, and watch how the, the Warner Brother logo transforms from a whimsically suspenseful, uh, you know, positive kind of feel with super saturated colors and, and major keys um, to later logos that reveal serious doom and gloom, uh, quietly impending uh, catastrophe, almost completely devoid of color. Um, literally, the, the logos and the, and, the, and the title is flaking and breaking apart as if um, Harry, Ron, and Hermione's world is breaking apart. Take a quick look.
So yeah, things get dark pretty quick. Um, I want to show you, you know, um, about 158 super fast logo titles revealed very, very quickly. And as you analyze this, I want you to put your graphic design thinking cap on. And I want you to analyze. If you recognize the movie, analyze what kind of color palette are they using? Is it saturated or desaturated? Is it bright or is it dark? Is it cheerful or is it gloomy and moody? Is it adult or is it whimsical and, and, and childlike? Um, what's the speed of the animation? What are the effects used? Um, the logo and the credit sequence really make sure it puts you right in the right frame of mind uh, to, to enter this world that the filmmakers are trying to put you in. Take a quick look and analyze 158 super fast movie titles. Here we go. You kill me every time 